What is up, everyone? Beautiful day. Look at that. Beautiful day today. Just did an impromptu live. Hopefully you guys are having a great weekend. Um, yeah, just decided to go live and answer some questions. Do a little show and tell. Hello everyone, thanks for joining. What's up? Some kids are there, you wanna be on YouTube? Anyway, hello from the US. <laughs> um, okay, so for several weeks now, perhaps a couple months, waiting for this car to go by, um, we were kind of thinking about making some improvements to our rebreathers. And, um, you know, Woody and I are pretty crafty with the rebreathers, but nothing like working with Mike directly. So we actually this morning flew here to kiss. We're at the Kiss factory. How awesome is that? So let's go inside and show you where they make these things. What do you think? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Smacking. Walking backwards here. Here you go. Woody being very hands-on as usual. You That's, know? don't pretend. Wanted to change some. That's. Because of the why I do it. Um, We're explain. live. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining. You caught him red-handed doing nothing. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> the question is, where do you get this turnaround? Uh, I would do that. My where, where do you get this overall thing? I'm authorized KISS factory maintenance employee. So what? why would I know? You want to see my machine shop? No. And what I'll do with that giant thing back there? That's not yours. Buttons? That's not even yours. But uh, there's... Thank you everyone for joining. Here we go, here we have Mike. And we're getting rid of all of this clutter. Yeah. I, I had extra stuff on there for a reason, but I don't, I'm now modernizing. But we'll let people decide. I mean, you look at Woody's mess. <laughs> all for a reason, reason. all have wise behind what all, I did. Yeah, that. yeah, I'm sure. Now check this out. Um, look at that thing. Yeah, one thing Orange. I did, but can I say one thing? And beautiful. His just, just went through an operation. I gave him one challenge. Will they keep one thing that you this invented is, this on? Is my spirit. Oh, He's talking spirit. about my sidewinder. Sidewinder. Will they keep one thing on his sidewinder that he modified or changed? One. Just why I challenge him. Be, just most to keep of one. It. That you're going to have to watch the that. Dive Talk actual video of what happens when we completely ICU, is where his sidewinder is right now, That's, and recovery. That's how much we had to change. I don't know about it, that. It's, it's fine, which I'm proud of him for adapting, turning it back into a sidewinder. What do you keep it That's safe and simple? And you, um, got a, you got an octopus going out of yours or something. Yeah, mine well, I had a lot what of is different... What's going on with well, yours? I went, would anybody want to know? I had logic behind it. Nope. <laughs> it's, it's a not, mine's the original baby. So we, now we're... That's all. All right. I'm part of the... The test team on how long original stuff can last without me necessarily always cleaning exactly let's, to the T of the time I'm supposed to. Let's answer some questions. Let's see if uh, people have any questions. And I'll more. ask to Mike or Tony, who's here. And, or me, because I'm well, helping. Or Woody, I guess. But... Uh, any questions, guys? You can tell them how excited I am right now because my baby's getting transformation. I love it. But now, I want to, the second this is done, you know where I'm going to want to be? Right next to this guy underwater. That's coming soon. This is why we change the old rings, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Total destruction. Well, it's usage. I'm heavy user. That's, yeah, okay. Let's see. Do I ever wear my watches when I go diving? Uh, not really, because when we dive the rebreathers, we have a computer on each arm. So I don't have any wrist space. Yeah. I didn't win the award for cleanest unit they've ever seen. I'm, mm. I'm not in the... I'm, that one, I'm going to admit, I probably didn't. 
How much How much does a Kiss Eye Winder cost? Depending on That's what you need. It's, it's like buying a car. Fun. How much does a car cost? Well, depending on what car and well, what it is. With your training and everything else, I mean, you probably need to, and your computers and all that, you're, 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 you're going to be in excess of, it could be 10-ish, 11. Yeah. I mean, with, I'm talking with the computers and everything, your bailout tanks and all that. So it's not just the Sidewinder. When am I going to try dry caving? Never. Oh, that was awesome trip I just had. Yeah. Is it sure true that Woody wanna... Woody was abducted? What? Are you sure you don't want to live me? Up? There's a massive machines back there. That I just want to push. How often do we get something. them service? They're asking. Different parts well, on the rebreather need different uh, services. Well, I tend to. Yes. Maybe right, I can answer. I'm being asked questions. He uh -oh. needs uh, some advice, right. maybe. Or, so you want the buttons? You, yeah. you you could route it across your chest like you're. But then this will, yeah, I if wanna, you wanted, but, uh, or, right, or I'll keep answering like questions. That. And then run your other hose. Can a person on oxygen uh, dive? Yeah, as long as you don't pass 20 feet. We should be consistent with the sidewinder. That way it's. Well, you can. Do you and yeah. Woody do the videos in the same That's place? Yeah, typically. A, this was my Not every time, but one, most yeah, of the time. Okay. Where's the Kiss Factory at? It's in Fort Smith, Arkansas. When way, do you I go diving? How do you urge to breathe through, it, through your nose? Not, no, you kind of get used to it. Uh, it Thank you, Brandon, for the okay, super chat. Well, how do you guys end up deciding to start using rebreathers? Um, Let me walk out for a second so I can answer that. So I think I think Woody was, you were like an impulse buy, right? Were you a rebreather? You just walk into a shop and you're like, yep, sign me up, order one. They just told me you can dive way longer on the wrecks and it, you can basically stay down for like days and i'm like i'll i'll take two okay and uh for me it was woody was my uh mentor when i was becoming a pro a dive professional um an instructor and stuff and he was doing rebreather so i started talking to him about it and i kind of jumped on board after that let's see sorry about the uh scrolling can a person who never dove dive with you guys knowing there are experts around you? Yeah, I mean, just come to our meetup in Cozumel, right? I would set that as a goal to get certified by then, so you'll be a brand new diver, and brand new divers are okay to come diving in Cozumel with us. Show them all the teeth that Mike gets. Yeah, Look at all these getting teeth. bombarded with uh, questions, okay. and we'll show you some of that stuff. Also, you can see it on the video we're going to release later. What... Okay. Why only 20 feet? Because oxygen is toxic below 20 feet. Pure oxygen, that is. Mine's still old school, not HD, but the spirit. All right. Does Woody believe in the Matrix? What? It was looking a little bit not streamlined. So will you believe in It's just because of the wave. How expensive is the scrubber stuff for the rebreather? And uh, I mean, About depends on what you consider expensive. But what do you $8 think? Eight dollars per load. Yeah, eight dollars per load. So every and the load will last you, you know, five six hours. Thank you from Peru. Yeah, nice sticker behind me. Dive talk. There's actually another one over there in one of the machines. How do you get a seal with a mustache? Just get the right mask. It fits like your face. Do all these, like these, I've never used these for anything. Any tips for a first timer? Right uh, just have fun. Like Try to relax and have fun. David, thank you for well, the uh, super chat. Um, yeah. Advice how to get back into diving after 10 years. I would say I would try to take the class again, to be honest, after 10 years, if I was you, but at least a refresher if you can do a whole class. Uh... They're saying that we should do more TikTok. How long is it training to become a rebreather diver? A week. Maybe yeah, I would say about a week. But you already have to be a open circuit yeah, diver by yeah. then. So you have to, there's a lot of training before you can actually start rebreather diving. Oh, no, I know. are you Italian? Yeah, nope. We'll I'm from South America. What classes would I need to take before becoming a dive master? It really is your own choice there's so many different options doug doug is here hey he's saying mike doug is saying hi hey doug how hey, are doug. you <laughs> we're doing surgery 
on my units. My spirit, Doug, not just my Sidewinder, my spirit. Mm. I can't wait to show you the changes that um, I'd like to say that I did not think of any of them, but they make total logical, awesome sense. And uh, yes, I do have my own overalls now. And I'm going to be operating giant machines shortly. No, you're not. That's about all I have. Somebody's right asking, would you dive the deepest cave in the world? It's a three-day hike on the ground to get to the water part, like the flooded cave. Mike would, but I'm... Oh, yeah. I'd be happy to. <laughs> Mike would yeah, love would be, to. Yes. Can been... Woody run a mile under two minutes? Mm -hmm. No. Gus, <laughs> what was your first cave dive like? It was okay, awesome. So now... It was at Ginny Springs. We're, we're streamlining all this, your oxygen side, yeah, right? It's a side diploma, big fan. So thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate we that. Do with you the same way we did, uh, what is the max time on the water on a rebreather? I think it depends on, on several yeah, factors, average. but <laughs> I would say between 6 and 12 hours. Awesome. So usually when I dive, talking about a reef. Let's see. It's possible to dive if you're. You have a lung collapse. I have no idea. I'm not a doctor. How is the CE certification coming along for the sidewinder? They're asking Mike. Um, I cannot give any updates on that. We cannot give any updates on that, but not, next week. Uh, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> not allowed. We don't know. We don't know. Who runs Dive Talk social media pages? We do. What do you think? We have employees? No, I'm just not stuff? in the loop on that. I, I know yeah. nothing about CE. I'm, I, uh, I, I'm just not in the loop on it. I got other things to concentrate on. Yes. Like building units. Do you ever go to other countries' caves? Yeah. So Me? once in a while. Oh, yeah. They're asking us. Uh, all of us. All right. Thoughts on GUE? Great agency. They typically produce really good divers. Um, is it difficult to get a two-liter aluminum cylinder in the U.S.? I don't know. How long until you find golden aliens? Come on. That's, I don't know. Okay, so we've, we've converted that, right? So you can screw that in there. Oh, um, wait, should I get that? Is it best to smoke weed before a longer I dive? I, I, I think well, smoking anything like, before diving is you bad. You don't need it on this yeah. because Does this anything ever right? scare it's you just, diving? Not, not really. Paper. Okay. So now, didn't people used to have build their own rebreathers? Probably. Okay. Luis says hello, Mike. It's the right side. What you were saying. How much is go. Woody's hat? I don't. I don't know. I don't do that either. The only way I can so, get to my shopdivetalk.com. By the way, the way that's I'm where you can get now. it. I would have to come off the loop, grab the fifty percent right. but I do like that. Like, um, no, you're gonna be able to do all that right here. Can we get Probably Woody's pink nice. set up okay. in the UK? Yeah. Well. The merch is, pink merch is available at shopdivetalk.com. So you can get it all over there. We're inspired to get the YouTube channel started. Um, we were just basically driving a lot to Florida. And we decided to just record our own trips and conversations and put it on on YouTube. Um, would you ever start reacting to other caving accidents or just cave diving? I don't know. There's plenty of cave diving stuff and I feel like we can add a lot more expertise to cave diving and not so much caving. Um, even though Woody does caving, like dry caving, but he's not an expert in it, at least at the same level as cave diving. Any good cave diving locations in South America? I'm sure. There's a ton. Uh, one of them that I would love to dive is this cave in the country I'm from, in Venezuela, that has never been explored and is believed to have the largest underwater lake in South America. So I would love to be one of the original explorers if I had, an, if I had a, the choice to do it. You ever thought about diving in flooded catacombs in Europe? Sure, I would love to. That, would, that sounds awesome. Any cool interviews coming up? We're always trying to talk to interesting people, but I don't have anything like booked. Uh, but, you know, there's several that I'm trying to get. Have you ever ran across any dangerous animals while diving? Just other humans, to be honest. That's the most dangerous thing on the water. But uh, no, nothing, nothing dangerous like that. Uh, what's your scariest moment diving? I guess, you know, the, the one at Roaring River where I found myself breathing air at 208 feet. And I talk about it in great detail on the Roaring River video part two. Mike, what is your all-time favorite cave? They're asking. The next one. The next one. I love that. I love Another one. 
So if we plug this into here. What kind of changes are being made to his rebreather? And we got, we're going to need to run this up here. Yeah, stay tuned. Okay, because you just Stay tuned. That. Uh, right. that, no, we're just streamlining and simplifying things. Is to run this down to a tank. Okay, but oh. the rebreather just fell. Okay, I think it's right there. What other questions do we have? Sorry, I'm covering the camera. That's not good. To that, because now it would be really easy because you can. That's the way. Have you ever pee on a dry suit? I have not. Not yet, at least. So once we get to here, to your neck, okay? Again, again, you had this one running. How long have you been diving? Four years, a little over four years. Do you believe it's deep on the water basis? No. Into the same plug. With your current government, you have to swim in the Chernobyl reactor at 3 a.m. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Do you guys teach which courses? A ton of them. I think we caught up with all the questions. So we're just, again, just working on rebreathers. Nothing specific, no mission. Yeah, um, just figure I'll bring balance. you guys along. Yeah. Like, imagine you came with us here to kiss. So, so uh, you were just joining the conversation. We'll we'll hook this through that manifold also. Let me show you some cool stuff. Okay, Watch this right between my legs. Well, no, don't okay. get any weird ideas. Let me just just watch. <laughs> I'm thinking out some redundancy stuff. You heard Seriously. between my legs and that caught your attention or something? Well, I, my, I did just get surgery, so I should be able to see things better. Be if you're talking surgery. about between your legs. Well, watch this. Surgery. By the way, Mike just gave us one of these to give away. Sure did. Watch this. Uh, he just gets gazillions per dive. Master pull yep, out there's... Look at these. Dozens. These are all about six inches, so those are really, really uh, oh, tough to find. Let's take it off at this That's cool. Damn, Pretty awesome. Cleaner. Yeah. Just giving them a quick tour. Go through here. Oh, look at this. So many parts. Rebreather land. This is my Sidewinder, which just went through surgery, and now he's orange. He used to be black, but now he's painted. Beautiful, best color ever. So I brought both Sidewinder and Spirit. That's why I have two cases. That's my regulator, actually. Don't forget it, let me move it. Look at that, even the SPG is orange. Beautiful. All right. Oh, let me show you the uh, other place for the other stick. Check that out. Yeah. Boom. Dive talk in the house. All right. Let's see what new questions came up. Whoa. Have you ever tried an SF2 rebreather? I have not. I guess Megalodon too crazy to find something like that yeah it's pretty awesome yeah yeah they're all mac teeth right, so to... repairing gear modifying it we are actually streamlining it and making it better and safer always always improving you dive overhead environment and expel bubbles how much risk is there of dislodging rocks from the ceiling can you tell when that is more likely? Well, we don't we dive rebreathers, so there's not a whole lot of bubbles. But uh, you know, the caves that we dive for are that are kind of I don't know caves that are dived a lot. Um, they've been you know thousands and thousands of divers have been through them, so it's very unlikely for that to happen. What do I think about the racer side mount? I haven't tried it. Wish they would send me one so I can test it and tell you what I think. How can I learn not not to breathe through my nose when breathing through my mouth? Uh, you just, you know, you do it. So in a class, I would probably just put the regulator in your mouth with no mask and put your face in the water. You will find out that you will stop breathing through your nose rather quickly. <laughs> Are you guys teaching your next class? Uh, I don't know. We just finished one. It was a rescue class. It was great. 
How long have you all been using a rebreather for? Uh, I think Woody got certified 11 years ago. I got certified in 2019, so three years. Hello from Germany. Hi. You ever heard of the Ben McDaniel incident? Yes, I have. Love the channel. From South Africa. Hello. The wreck dive. Absolutely. Uh, we have a react to the Plurak cave accident. Uh, not yet. I reached the fish nurse for the interview. No. Okay, I think I have caught up with most questions. All right, let's scroll down. Let's see. What else? Insta live from a deep cave. That would be cool. The more streamlined you are, the better off you are. Go Mexico or buy a Kiss rebreather with training. Orange is hardly color, not Indian. Orange is awesome color. Have you reacted to a Kevin accident? Not yet. Do you ever? What was that? Do you ever reach? Okay, we already talked about. When do you decide to be a cave diver? What inspired you? Just other rebreather divers that did it, and. Uh, I became a cavern diver, did that for a while, and then I moved on to cave. How to find top instructors and vet them to find the best in certain in certain countries? That's a really good question. I mean, just word of mouth and, and researching. Um, do you ever talk to fish like Woody? No. Finally call you live that I'm in or cover the Linnea Mills. Not yet. We're waiting on all the facts to come out. Should come try diving flooded mines in Sweden. Absolutely, that sounds awesome. Uh, let's see. Hello, Gus. Hi. Cave diving, I think, in Canada. I'm sure. What's the strangest, oldest narcosis symptom you've had? Um, like I said, I talked about it at length on the uh, Roaring River Part Two video. What's your favorite ocean or cave diving? That's a really good question. It depends on the cave and depends on, on the ocean. So the answer is yes. I like them both. Why do you think fishing line is attracted to you? That's a good question. I don't know, man. I always keep getting stuck on them. Just want to tell you that your content is sub-quality. Perfect for my morning coffee in south of France. Man, it's like the evening in France. Hi, Miranda. Is diving worth trying out or going through the classes for? Absolutely, you should try it. Sign up with uh, Try Scuba and uh, check it out. Probably going to be like $50. And if you love it, sign up for the class. Do I still do BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Not anymore. Besides diving, what other passions do you share with Woody? Um, just making YouTube videos, I guess, and motorcycle riding once in a while. Um, let's see. Um, I don't, I mean, we use flashlights is asking the question, are there any lighting systems for caves? We just use our flashlights. Uh, what motorcycle do you have? I have a 2021 Indian Scout Bobber. Does your family dive? No, just me. Oh, my brother dives too. Is it true the kiss Sidewinder doesn't have water traps, so the scrubbers on the exhaling side is always wet? It's not always wet, but it can get some moisture depending on the length of the dive, but that's not a problem. How long have you and Woody known each other? I think three years now. Come to Chicago, let's do some Portillos. Yeah, that sounds good. You guys should watch SeaWorld diving accident videos. I discovered your channel today. Thank you for tuning in. Amir, you look like an Indian rider. Okay. Um, I guess Indian riders look like me. Switzerland, big fan. Had an open water certification recently. Congrats. What do you want? I, people don't want to see what you're doing. I don't. They, they can comment if they want to see it, but don't, nobody is commenting right now. You think the new Perdix 2 is better? Better than what? Perdix 2 is awesome. So, Woody, I would think that if we What do you do for work? I work for Microsoft. Yeah, you head back and forth and see if you still have the thing. You ever use Facebook account? I see Woody's post on all the time, but not yours. I use it once in a while. Nobody... <sighs> four people have commented saying they want to see what you're doing, but that's not... You want... You, you, got, you want to see what we're doing here. Okay. All right. Fine. I don't... So, 
right now, we're so detailed that we're changing the length of how much strain I have when I turn hey, my head. Hey, you baby. know this expensive hose you bought, Woody? Oh. Oh. That's me. Oh. Oh. See, I don't always have a choice of what happens here at Kiss, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, this, I'm not kidding you. This is the level of detail that they do here at Kiss. They were just measuring this hose just... Like, Oh, I don't How much pull do I want to feel on my BOV when I turn my head? There. So everything's yeah. being changed on I, my unit. Like, are we are we going across. to pretend you don't have a ridiculous mustache on your thing? Is that what we're doing? This was a gift from Donnie. I'll have them now Who? on all of my regs. Every reg I have, every this is now on all of them. Wow. And don't be jealous, but I'm authorized. That's why I That's have. Just the name factory. In Arkansas, when you're in a factory, you wear overalls. If you don't, you should not be in the factory. All right. All right. In all seriousness, I'm not joking. So we're just, this used to come down, right? And I would be routing this way. Now it's more streamlined. I'm going to plug in from a low pressure inflator hose on this side. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I didn't hear what he you caught said. it. And now he doesn't have a replacement. That's and, great. Uh, I don't have the fitting I need, I don't think. And, and on cut. that terrible disappointment. And, <laughs> no, I have to. <laughs> oh, no, I'm laughing myself at that. That's hilarious. I Gosh. love it. I have to have one. There has Can to I cut another a, one? We're at the Kiss Factor. In the back somewhere <laughs> there is one. Oh, ah, there's one. <clears throat> what? what? I do have one. <laughs> anyway, I'm, check this new part out. So on my, on my other head over here, it's way easier. So when I take my unit off, see this rotates. Now I put this little rotation... I like to say I put this little rotation piece well, on. That's but I didn't really think of anything, but it will make it undo it. Two seconds. Boo! All good. This is my old MAV. And now new. Two. Oop, right across my chest, so it's just more streamlined. Come mm. across here. And less hoses now have to be in the back and over my shoulder. So you're building an actual hose? Yeah. My Whatever it takes, wow. it does. Mm. Just, you know. We shortened it because I was kind of sticking out in photographs when it was connecting to my BOV normally, right here. Normally, if I need a hose of a particular size, you build it. I have to buy like five of different sizes and pick the right one. <laughs> Mike just cut it to the right size and makes a new hose. Where's my? What are you holding? What is that? Explain to people what what what's the name of it. Let's just start with that. What's that called? That's easy. Oh, yeah. You don't want to challenge me on basic stuff like that. What are you? It's a Metro S ISO. This is a Metrodome ISO that <laughs> helps Dome. with both. That's where the with both CPR. That's where the Houston Astros. And play. it's Whitworth, which I only will buy that brand. And uh, this does really well with yeah? various precise measurements, ranging from various shockproof mm. measurements. Like which ones? What, are, what, what, are, what do I use this for? What are well-known shockproof hose measurements? Hose width. Hose width. Because that changes airflow. Uh -huh. That would be one. Uh-huh. Wow. So far, I'm doing pretty well. No, no, yeah. Nailed it. Similar to how many cities can you name in Arkansas? Well, that's... Let's not get into that. Walmartville is definitely one. All right. What's the difference between electric rebreather and mechanical rebreather? One is... A not one is electric and the other one is not electric. It's not being electrically controlled by your computer, but it is a constant mass flow over and the ability to adjust your PO2 manually. So yeah. it's both a constant mass flow and adjusting your PO2 manually makes it a mechanical rebreather. Mm -hmm. Electric, if you want to call it that. Basically, the shear water is set to a set point of PO2 and it's firing your O2 whenever it needs to raise or lower your PO2. And Mike just made a host. <laughs> Mike, somebody's asking, what's your most memorable moment diving? Well, that's a tough one. So that picture in there with the tiger sharks? Yeah. They let me pet them. What? Come here. Who let you pet them? The tiger sharks. The so tiger just, sharks. Got abandoned. They got they together and made a decision? Thing. All of the photographers on the right, ship, were, on. they were leaving me alone, and I was swimming with these guys, 
and, and he let me, he, he, he started swimming underneath me because all the other divers was leaving me alone. Mm. And so then he started swimming right underneath me. And when I would go left, he would go left and he just stayed right underneath me. And then pretty soon I started petting him and he just stayed right with me. Do you think he would have done that if you were not on a rebreather? Oh, no, no, no. Right. I mean, I don't know what else I can tell you. All right, let's see. What questions? This is one of my bungees attached, but they're way too tight. All right, so if we wanted this, because you want to still be able to use those, right? Definitely. On average, how many people do you usually dive with? Is there a max people would you take on a cave dive with? What's the biggest What's the biggest team we've had cave diving? I know yours is bigger, but for us, like five? About five. If five's getting to be a lot. Yeah. We've had, what, 13 in the water? Yeah, 13 people in the water. Usually nine. We've had 11 as well. But diving at the same time, like just going on a regular cave dive. Oh, yeah. No. Typically, you want those small. Five or six will be. Yeah, five or six. We've yeah. had five, I think. You don't want like 30 people cave diving. It's just too hard to relay information if the person on the 27th spot has a problem. What's the difference between leg? Okay, we already answered that. What is your favorite wristwatch? I see you wear a lot of nice watches. So my favorite watch is a Hamilton Jazzmaster Maestro. Well, That's I, my I, favorite watch really that I own. But you know what? You know, I always dive with It's you pretty awesome. Very, very underrated that. watch company, and they are up, amazing. Like, if you want to have a super yeah. nice watch, but you don't want to spend like a gazillion dollars for it, yeah, yeah. look at Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton is yeah. great. Yeah. Swiss made, amazing. All right, let's see. Oh, let's see. Is Woody an alien? No. For someone interested to start closed circuit, how can one make an informed decision on what rebreather system to learn? Just think about the things you want to do and look at maybe divers that you admire, divers that you look up to and see what they're diving and learn about their systems. No, I don't, I'm not going to, I don't need to put Woody's Spanish abilities to the test. He has no abilities. Nothing to test over there. Manufacturo Standardo Modification in La Sala. How was that? Terrible. Um... Fascinated by diving, but can't do it myself because uh, I guess some issues. Cheers from Australia. Hello. Hello. From here. Let's see. Rebreather on the Galapagos. That sounds awesome. Can you ask my if her tungsten peak mine in California? I think you should do a kiss rebreather giveaway at 250k, maybe at a million if we ever make it to a million. That sounds like a good one to give away. Let's see, what else? Have you ever been in sea caves? We have. Any thoughts on the Garmin Descent Mark II? Um, I haven't tested it. I reached out to Garmin and I said. We will love to test the Mark II when it came out. Can you send us a couple just to borrow them? Like not even to keep them because if, if they let us keep them, we typically give them away. That's kind of how we do products that, that are sent to us for testing. We test them and then we give them away. But uh, Garmin never responded. You know, I don't know why. I don't know. The scuba industry doesn't have a whole lot of uh, social media awareness. So you reach out and they're like, eh, no, you don't have to test it. Okay. So I have no thoughts on it. I don't know. What do you have? An axe on the wall. People are asking why you guys have an axe on the wall. Where's the axe? For oh. oh, that's our fire axe. Fire axe. Like, what do you mean? When you're fired. Oh, when you're fired. You, oh, I see. I see. That's how we do. You're axed. Let's chase you out of here when you're fired. That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, was Woody's favorite fish to talk to? Come on, guys. That's sharks. Sharks, right? That I'm not even one bit joking about. 
Will you ever come back to Missouri? Sure. One day. Have you gotten lost or turned around and separated from your partner when the seal gets kicked up? I mean, I, that's hard to answer. I mean, during the silt out, you don't see, you can't even see your own hand. So we, uh, we're separated in a sense, but never lost. We always get together after the silt. Whose shop are you at? We are at Kiss Rebreathers at the factory in Arkansas. You ever had a dive trip in Italy? No, I have not. Take me. Take me. That sounds good. You had any really frightening experiences? What, underwater? Not really. Just, you know, emergencies that we dealt with because we learned to deal with them. Daria is sending you a kiss, Woody. Well, she actually said, give Woody a kiss. Daria? Wells nice. said, give Woody a kiss for me, which is not going to happen, but she's, well, I guess she likes you. Zero chance. How much money in just consumables in a standard cave dive? I mean, the air that we take into caves, okay. for the most part, 99% of it, so, it's only there for bailout reasons, like if your rebreather stops working. So when you fill your tanks, let's say they cost you, I don't know, $30, whatever. That can last you 10 cave dives, 20 cave, whatever. You know, every every once in a while, we do bail out on purpose to practice. So, you know, you, we're never going to have tanks that have air from like a year ago or something. You know, after a few months, we'll bail out on purpose to make sure that everything in our system works because we can always bail back into the rebreather. So, you know, we fill it, dive a bunch of times, bail out, fill them again. So it's, it's super inexpensive. Basically, this will be like this. Let's see. So when are you considering going RB? I'm not sure what that means. Howdy guys. Hello. I'm going to put them in the background so you can see them. What kind of sewing machine is that in the background? One that Woody doesn't use. Thankfully. What's the last place and time you dove? I guess during the rescue class we went diving. That was a few weeks ago. Coldest temperature you've ever dived in? About 34, 35 degrees, which was in Iceland. That's that's Fahrenheit, so about one degree Celsius. Well, I would say your oxygen video where you plug in the wrong tank. Yeah, that's the scariest moment. Can you ask Woody his favorite moment diving? Yeah, in a little bit. They're busy right now. Everyone thumbs up this video. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. For the reminder, should I go get my school certification? I just randomly became interested. Absolutely. You're going to fall in love with it. Favorite warm water diving spots to avoid the cold months? It's hard to beat Cozumel. Cozumel is awesome. That's why we decided to do our... Our meetup there, I mean, Cozumel is just amazing diving. It's warm, it's super, super great visibility, and drift diving. So you're, you know, the current is taking you, you're not even swimming, it's just unbelievable. We're going to be doing some swim throughs as well in Cozumel. So if you if you like swim throughs, that's the place to do it. What are they doing to the rebreathers? Just, you know, streamlining it, making them better. Always looking to get better. Have you tried to deploy a DSMB in a cave? No, we've never even taken a DSMB in a cave. Would you like to dive more often? Absolutely. Uh, any any glove recommendations for snorkelers? Depending on the water temperature, I guess. It's hard to say. Any tips for getting into gear repair? I'm an electrician, but I would have more fun working in school gear. Just take the class, the equipment class. How were you when you started diving? Uh, I was 35. Also a reminder, this video is upcoming. Yeah, play as soon as it's out. Are you claustrophobic? No, I don't think so. What's the hardest cave for you so far? Mm, I mean, I really, really struggled when I was learning 
um, on the caves would flow in Florida. Just all of them were hard because you're learning how to swim on flow, like in the actual cave flow. It's, it's, it's tricky to learn about cave flow dynamics and knowing where to position your body so you're not swimming against the toughest flow. Uh, that's something you learn over time. Your instructor helps you, but you kind of learn little by little. So you keep getting better and better. But the first few dives are terrible. They're hard. Your body's not used to it and you're frock kicking, which you're, which you're not used to it. And you know, your both legs are cramping. It's just hard, but um, yeah. Is there a legit good website to get diving gear from? A lot of websites are, are good. Um, you know, depending on the, depending on where you are and depending on the gear you're trying to get, I would say. Do you know about cave divers founding something valuable? Finding something valuable in a cave? Yeah, there is several examples. Mike himself has found some amazing historic stuff in Mexico. He's dived over 40 cenotes in Mexico and they found like Mayan artifacts and stuff like that that are invaluable. They went to museums. What are good and easy springs to dive in Florida? Uh, if you're not cave certified, don't go diving in any springs, but the most common ones will be Ginny Springs, Peacock Springs, Little River. Those are the common ones. Any more planned videos with Ed in the near future? Ed will be at our meetup, by the way. You can get to not only meet him in person and hear from him in person, but also dive with him. So if you're going to the meetup, you'll meet him over there. But yeah, I would love to have Ed on the show again. Are you guys are you guys going to dive cenotes um, while wearing Cozumel? No, we're not taking anyone in cenotes. You know, we're always safety first. Uh, we're sticking to the ocean. Best shipwreck you guys dived in? The Oriskany, I would say. Probably the best one. Um, do you guys have plans to go Megalodon teeth hunting again? Yes, very, very soon. I saw your mind diving video. You should come to Sweden and try diving our minds. I would love to. Transmitter on shore hose or not? Yep, absolutely. Skydiving or scuba diving? Scuba diving, 100 times. Who's the oldest diver you know? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, when was the last time you used your DPV? I don't know, a couple months ago. How fast can you go on a DPV? Depending on the DPV, but pretty fast. Our does... 95 meters per minute so about 300 feet per minute um Cozumel sounds more and more attractive absolutely if you haven't raised her for Cozumel you should take advantage of it because I think there's like eight rooms left so definitely sign up when are you going caving never cave diving soon can we use booty as rebreather in general I'm not sure what that means how often do you replace the chemicals in your rebreather? Every few hours, or if it floods, you have to do it immediately. How long were you underwater in your life altogether? I have no idea. Dozens of hours, who knows? Have you ever wondered with all that flowing case, how does, uh, how does it keep flowing? Yeah, I wonder that all the time and I have no idea. How many of your videos are already planned out? Well, uh, that's a, depends on the week. Uh, sometimes we have several, sometimes we have none. You guys going diving after this? No, we're not diving this weekend. We're literally just working on rebreathers. My spirit is next, but this one was done first. My sidewinder is already packaged and ready to go. Already optimized, new painted canisters, some new hardware like this, quick connect and the waistband. Some cool enhancements done, but uh, I also brought my spirit which is sitting over there on a bench and woody's working on his spirit right now yeah redoing How's the bungees i'm redoing the bungees so basically everything bit. you had was wrong and you're redoing everything i'm redoing the bungees Great. just to make them a little bit more flexible so that when i come under the valve valves out and into the other side i can actually reach that and then it sucks those tanks back mm -hmm. and your trim is like beep, beep. whatever that means i'll show you Hello, puppy. All right. And so next, we got this beast, which is a lion fish killing machine. That's why it has that sticker right here. And it's all orange. 
Even my stand is orange. I love it. All right, feel that. I wish this was orange. I wish this was orange. I wish this was orange. Yeah, still right. a anyway, bit tighter than that, huh? We got some uh, cool stuff coming. Try that. Yeah, that feels. You do both or just one Which Pelican case is that? It's the Pelican Air 1615. It's the biggest one you can get that can be checked in without going through like the large luggage section or whatever. Uh, Anton is asking what makes you guys start diving rebreathers. Depth, time underwater, helium costs. Yes, all of the above. That's a lot of hoses on those rebreathers. Yeah, sure. How many guys have you had anxiety on? I don't I don't think so. How heavy is the diving gear once you're kitted up? Depending on the dive. And depending on what I'm wearing. What type of chemicals are in the scrubbers? Uh, it's called Sofnolime. How long is in good condition? Can you dive on a rebreather not diving deeper than 130? Um, hours. Depending on the temperature of the water and your sac rate and several factors, but hours. Workshop looks awesome. Can you show us around? Mike, they want a tour. Sure, yeah. Can non-divers go to your Cozumel get together? Absolutely, there's a non-diver rate. It's way cheaper than the diver rate since you're not gonna be diving in. You can totally come hang out with us, listen to the speakers like Mike, he will be a speaker at the meetup. So definitely sign up and meet us. Will you get more gold than Woody next time? Well, we both got zero, so. Twice as much. Yeah, I'll get twice as much as Woody. Zero times two. Yeah, that was just Amos negotiating. He <laughs> wants my gold, and I'm still not giving it to him. Got, <laughs> do I recommend going cave diving on an empty stomach? I think that's a personal preference. What do you think, Mike? I'll oh, flip no, the camera. I eat, a, I eat every couple hours before dive. <laughs> <laughs> you eat a couple hours before you dive? Every couple hours. Oh, every couple hours <laughs> while you're awake. All right, got it. There you go. Eat every two hours, Mike says. <laughs> Does a person's height affect their cave diving cap possibilities? They're asking, they're asking if a person's height, I mean, it's saying height. It could be short, a short person or a tall person. Does it affect your cave diving capabilities? Nope. Absolutely not. Yeah, Randall is like 6'13", and he's diving. So, didn't know you guys did live videos. Yeah, we do it once in a while. You guys are awesome. Thank you. You were coming as a single person to Cozumel. Would you then be lodged with someone else in the rooms? Mm -hmm. It depends, you know, uh, when you sign up, it will ask you if you want a roommate or if you want to do a solo room. Solo rooms are a little bit more expensive, of course, because you don't get to share, but uh, you get to pick what you want to do. I want to scuba dive where I'm scared. I'm a skydiver instead. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't. I All right. Say, uh, he lost me on that one. I'd like to scuba dive right now. <laughs> can you share professional made pictures of you and woody in a cave we don't have a whole lot of them but we do have well, some Brian and they're come they're going live on our website which is going to be launching soon do you use tape do you use tape duct tape for the maintenance woody they're asking since you say everything is fixed with duct tape no we fixed it right you, exactly. Mike said they fixed it right, so a no duct tape. Purple Almer's glue, though, goes a long way. Anyway. My favorite saying is God saying to Woody, uh, no. no. That happens once in a while. Is it true? It's a new Sidewinder in the works. Well, they're working on the CE approval, which is for the European market, so they will make some changes. How long has Kiss been making rebreathers? That's a good question. Since 1998. Since 1998, so. Well, actually, 95, but they started 90. selling to the public in 98. I see. So for three years, it was an illegal operation. So no, since 1995, they started building rebreathers, and in 98, they started making them commercially available. So it's been uh, it's been quite a few years. Um, says skydiving is only a fear for a few seconds, and then 
you get used to it. I wouldn't know. It'll never happen. Retirement. I don't. This is a. Retirement. It's a weird question. I'm not even. Look at this, and I think of how many times. That's they. They can't see you, but let me. Push this button. Okay. I'm just saying goodbye. This. She's in retirement. We've had a lot of beautiful memories together. Yeah. She's been replaced with the new, more modern. But I'm just thinking about all the things we did, and you were very nice. You and Dill were wonderful. You were beautiful O2. Thank you, Atop, for taking me through many, many great adventures. So. I'm going to ask Tony this question. Tony, come here so you can answer the one question. All right. So E. Barry is asking, is it true that cave diving is actually uh, incredibly safe as long as you follow the rules of the sport and know your gear? If you're, if you're cave certified and you do follow all the rules, about tying your lines correctly, checking gear before you get in, have the right gas mix, and how deep you are, it, I would consider it safe. Every time you cave dive, there's a risk. So, you, you know, you got to- So getting on the other state. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. You have to dive with qualified people, people you trust, that will help you and you can help them. There you go. Okay. So that's your answer. Very good answer. All right. Are Mike Young biceps real? What? <laughs> no, they are uh, prosthetics. <laughs> CGI. We CGI them on the life. Um, let's see. So, some people weren't able to hear that answer, Tony, because I, I was facing the wrong way. So, go ahead and answer again. Cave so, the, so cool. the question was, is can, they, can cave diving be safe if you follow the rules and have the right equipment? Absolutely. But, you know, the, you have to do everything right every single time. There's no shortcuts. Uh... And you need to be diving with people you trust or with people you're training, but they absolutely need to be trained first and cave certified. Awesome. How deep have you guys gone? So I've been to 248. I think Woody has done three something. And Mike, I know you've been to 472, but is that the deepest? Yep. For you? All right. 472 feet for Mike. Would you recommend to start out with a back plate and wing for a beginner? Sure. You said in a previous video that used rebreathers cannot be used on their 30, that, that the rebreathers cannot be used on their 30 feet? What? No. Oxygen rebreathers. Oxygen rebreathers cannot be used on their 20 feet. Are you planning any more scuba diver stereotype videos? Yes, that's right. We have another one that we're gonna work on when we have time. Always another video. Yep. Is Woody, is Woody wearing the new Apple Watch Ultra? He is. He's getting familiar with it because we're gonna be testing them and the claims of being a full feature dive computer, which is the claims from Apple. So we'll see. Are they? Does your civil status matter in your diving abilities? I'm not even sure what that means. So if you're not a mouth breather, how annoying is a mouth regulator? You get used to it. <laughs> you can breathe or don't breathe. Yeah, you either drown or you get used to it. So it's actually pretty quick. What's that in meters? 472? I have no idea. I would say right around 140 something. Somebody can answer, but I would say 140... 140 put, put, meters. On the lower one. Nice drawing back there, this yeah. Is because this is what's uh, all good when you get a hold of the tour of the dive talk studio, maybe someday. <laughs> Do you need to have advanced nitrox with eco procedures first before you can get certified with a sidewinder? No, you actually get that class right. as part of your sidewinder class. Thank you. It's very non cave dive you've ever done. That's a good question. They're asking, what's your favorite non-cave dive you've ever done? That's a hard question. I mean, I'm, in the region, I would have to say, I always do say, like, my, my dive I'm on and my next dive, but I just, it's really hard to beat Southeast Asia. Indonesia's like, yeah, 
unbelievably magnificently gorgeous. Yeah. It really, it really is. I would say Cozumel and the Maldives are probably tied for me, number one. The beauty of Indonesia. I was blown away when I saw it. 143 uh, meters is the answer. How about that? I was pretty close. I said 140. Does Mike have an oxygen rebreather? Mike, do you have an oxygen only rebreather? I have several. You have several. All right. I don't know why I didn't know that. Here's this. That's a lunchbox. Chest. What? Chest mount. Oh my God. Oh, you haven't seen that. Well, come in there. Look at this. Okay. This is just great. It's right here. It's on your wrist. You can see. Come on, Ronnie. Let's do it. This is a this is a British oh my military God. oxygen rebreather. That's awesome. And this is a Vietnam era Lars Five. That's awesome. And this is a cannon you guys found, right? Yes, yes. This was a Tony's Tony's prize. That's awesome. Swivel gun. <laughs> that's cool. Wow. Well, that's that. All right. Can we do a, a quick tour of the go that way, the factory? Since we've seen this room. Don't, don't show this. We, we kicked over our paperwork. I will not. It's a super secret paperwork we didn't show. So you can see the level of operation here. These are our milling machines. Wow. They, uh, if you make something square, it's done in a milling machine. Okay. Like those things over here, what are these? The new maps? Yeah, these are going to be manual lab valves. The dual button manual lab valves. Wow. I wish you could do one that it was reverse buttons so I can switch mine. <laughs> So oxygen and dill were swapped. Oh. Too hard. I'll think about that. Okay. This is a lathe. This is what we make round parts on. Cool. And another lathe. We have some surface grinders over there for when we're doing tool and die work. The little CNC mill here for computer machining. Nice. And then we have a little bit bigger CNC mill over here. But, uh, wow. Since all the stuff we do is pretty small. Don't let don't, Woody don't touch do. any of this. I wouldn't even let him in this room, to be honest. <laughs> Just to keep it safe. <laughs> nope, you're not allowed in here. Well, this one I'm gonna, in a few minutes, yeah, He's gonna start, start, his, a, a start his work shift here in a minute. That's. I have a job. Oh, you're getting lots of questions now. Oh my. I'm gonna take Deluron. What? Del I'm gonna torque out with this machine. I'm gonna keep it. What's this? What? On a Woody, what? What? What's this machine called? I'm probably gonna keep it on a five three five six, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Until okay, I but start what, my what's job. what's this called? Huh? Mike said the name like a second ago, but I forgot it. So what what's the name? Feed drill press. Okay. <laughs> That's well, easy. I use well, these for years. You know that? But he's not completely wrong. But uh, this is a quill. But 99% wrong, you would and, say? Uh, it's a milling machine. It's a, it's a really fancy drill press. How about that? How about that I knew it was a drill press, which you cannot believe. <laughs> you can't even believe I knew that word. boys up and Let's, just drill something. Yeah. And these are awesome. And he makes everything in there. Yeah, well, that was... So, Mike, if you just slow and all these over time... And about that? Series, it's a lot of machinery. Yeah. Yeah. We, we started with one, and as we got more business, we got another one. And so that's it. Just kept growing. Just kept Built. growing. And so we, whenever I took over KISS, we already had all the machines because we had a a tool and die business where we made, made tooling for companies. Gotcha. And, uh, and we still do occasionally do tooling work. We have the upgraded CNC machines. Yeah. They're, they're really nice. Pretty cool. 
Yep. All right, well, let's answer some more questions, and then I think we should uh, wrap up the, uh, yeah, the live. We really are going to make some stuff. How many rebreather units do you manufacture in a year, on average, they're asking? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's, it, it fluctuates. It fluctuates. <laughs> I don't know how we would do that. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have at least 100 on order. Uh, Can uh, 3D printers be used to manufacture parts for a rebreather? So they've not been very successful in that. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the reasons they're not very successful in that is because the 3D printers can't hold the tolerances necessary. Um, and then a lot of the materials used in 3D printing are not, um, they absorb water. And so they absorb water and swell. And so that's not good either. Uh, but we've been, you know, we've been trying to keep up with the latest technologies. And uh, recently there's a, a company come out with a new material for printing. And we had a sample head made. And, uh, and I dove it uh, in that sump last weekend. Wow. really rough sump trip and it held up really well and so it's uh it's going to open up a lot of possibilities for for rebreathers that's awesome because now we'll be no longer constrained by how by the machining because you just the, print them the, out when the, you need them well no not not that because but when you're machining you can only machine certain things i mean there's you have limits of what you can machine but the printer can print any shape any style with hollow spaces, you know, things like that. So it'd really be nice if it works out. Awesome. All right, let's see if we have any more questions here. Somebody's saying that there's metal printers too. Metal 3D printers. Yeah, but you don't want to make a metal rebreather. You don't want to make a metal rebreather, that makes sense. One, one of the problems is metals are very heat conductive. Mm-hmm. And a lot of metals are reactive to soar. Yeah. <laughs> so it would be bad if your rebreather started putting off a toxic gas as it dissolved like acid. Somebody's asking this question. I have no idea what it means. TIG or MIG welds? TIG or MIG welding. We're not, uh, nothing on the rebreathers are welded. Nothing on the rebreathers is But welded. we do have both the capability of both. Okay. So you say TIG, not TIG? TIG. TIG. TIG and MIG. All right. See, I don't know anything. Tungsten inert gas. Okay. Hey, Woody. Yeah. What does TIG stand for? They're asking about TIG welding. Hello? It's an acronym. You. Hello. That's. He's <laughs> pretending. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> People are saying that he ha he has a name tag, so it's got to be legit. Wouldn't name tag it on my mind? Uh, you know the last scene? We should take that tag off it. <laughs> yeah, take off that line, that tag, name tag. Um, let's see. Why, why are the maps a big block? Well, you start with a big block and yeah. then carve it down to the right size. Yeah, you start with a big block and you carve it down. Uh, they're asking what is in your necklace. What necklace is Mike wearing? It looks dope. You've had that thing for a long time. Yeah, I had this since I was living in Africa. It's a, a hippo tooth that was carved into the likeness of Nyami Nyami. What? Which is a serpent-like creature that lives at the base of Victoria Falls in the Devil's Cauldron. And all of the animals are so afraid of Nyami Nyami that if you wear the likeness of him, the crocs and the hippos and stuff, they leave you alone because they're afraid of Nyami Nyami. Much work. Yeah. Much work. work. Alligator wow. Farm yeah, for me. You got an alligator farm, so you know you're still alive. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Okay, so I think we should probably wrap it up with um, people are asking for the Dive Talk HQ. No, this is KISS. KISS USA factory in Arkansas. Um, I think we should wrap it up with, uh, the story you told us earlier of your pet. I, I want people to hear that. So guys, we're going to say goodbye after this, but, uh, 
yeah, you gotta hear this. All right, go ahead. All right, so I was out at the family's alligator farm and somebody had brought some orphan raccoons to the farm. And uh, one of the little coons was uh, smaller than the rest and was being picked on. And, and uh, so I got him and I cleaned him up and I was feeding him and I, and I ran around with him for three or four days. And when I got ready to leave, he didn't really want to leave me to leave. And so I brought him home with me. And uh, so he lived at our house for a little while, but he liked to play too rough. And uh, our daughter was pretty young at the time. And one of, one of Jasper's favorite games was to run across the end of the couch and grab Abby's ponytail and swing. That's not. <laughs> and tear it around. Anyway, so Jasper went and started living at the shop. And uh, it was a different shop than we have now. But, uh, but he lived there for about a year. And uh, he would lay on top of the machines when, the, when it was hot because the metal was cold, you know. And, and he would lay up on the air conditioning. And anything we had on a shelf, he would play with it until it fell on the floor. And then it was no longer fun. And so we couldn't keep anything on shelves. <laughs> it was awesome. And then in the ceiling, we had a uh, heavy plastic and he would climb up and get up in that plastic and treat it like a hammock and he would lay in the plastic, you know. But he liked to be wherever I was and so he, wherever one of the machines was at, he would tear a hole so he could stick his head out of the plastic and watch me. And uh, So he was just destroying the whole shop. Yeah, no, not too bad. <laughs> when, during the winter when he would hibernate, he'd go, he would get in the wall and go down in the insulation, he made a burrow. And so each day I would come in and I'd get a chocolate chip cookie and I'd break it and he would hear it break and he'd come running out to get his cookie. But uh, anyway, he uh, one day I was working and I saw something out of the corner of my eye and I looked and I thought I saw a rebreather loop hose and uh, I, I waited and I, and, I, and I went back to work and I looked real quick again and, and sure enough he had a rebreather loop hose and he was fishing for Mike. And he'd put it out the hole and ever, whenever I would turn and look at him, he'd pull it back right quick. <laughs> But he was a lot of fun. We we played a lot. Now we have Roni. Come on, Roni. Get up here and say hi. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he kind of likes All me. right, Roni. Say goodbye. We're saying goodbye to this All live right. stream. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us here at the Kiss Factory. We actually are getting ready to... Um, Pet raccoons. What are we going to make? What, what particular thing? Well, we're going to get you machining on those MAVs. That's okay, good. That's we're way not, behind, that's, and you need to get to work. So that some people's like, MAVs will be made by me, and that's that, satisfactory to me. That sounds so dangerous. Yeah, they'll be tested by Tony. I don't think the lawyers... And Tony will, will test them <laughs> for zero tolerance. No, I want to see how it works, though. It's going to be cool to watch something that I've loved for many, many years is... You know, I certainly have experienced the reliability of the KISS units because I've been diving them for almost 10 years. And now I get, I really feel privileged to be able to see the why, how they make it, what they do, what's their logic. So we're here and we get to um, experience that through tomorrow. That's what's going on. See you all.